What's up, guys, and welcome to the Bro Four Squad Quick Lift Podcast. This is where we do just a quick set, throw some 45s on, do some bench on one movie that one or all of us has seen. In this case, just me and Banner have seen it. Magnificent Seven movie reviews. So I'm going to bring them in. My name is Matt Geiger, and I'm joined with my bro from the hood, Brian Banner. Brian, what's up, man? What's going on, my friend? First off, I want to thank you for reminding me that Magnificent Seven is in theaters because I totally forgot about it. And once you said it on our last podcast, I can't remember what it was. I think we were doing some X-Men stuff and you said you said it. I'm like, I have to see this movie. So I took my wife and saw it and we'll get our initial thoughts. First, I want your initial thought going into this film. So going in, I... I I didn't have a whole lot of high hopes just because Western, we haven't had any real good Westerns in the last decade or so. I mean, I think the last good one that I would say was probably 310 to Yuma. So they just haven't gotten Westerns right here recently. But then I'm a big Chris Pratt fan and I follow him on Twitter. He was hyping this movie so fucking much that I was like, there's no way I can't go see this now. And the more that he talked about it, the more I got into it and the more excited I got. So I was super stoked to start i was excited for a lot of reasons going into this movie one it's a western and since matt geiger has become a household name everyone knows i grew up on a horse farm so i was really stoked to see this both of my grandpas on my mom and dad's side whenever they babysit me we watch westerns all the time i've seen every john wayne movie and every clint eastwood movie that they put out the other reason i was really excited to see it is the director um antoine Fakwa, which i hope i'm pronouncing that right but Who cares if I'm pronouncing it right? I can pronounce the products he has done on the screen. One is called Southpaw, which is my favorite kind of closet movie of all time. Made me like Jake. Oh yeah, made me like Jake Gyllenhaal. And the other one is Training Day, which is obvious because he brought Ethan Hawke and Denzel back on the screen. The one reason I want to see this movie, initial thoughts going in, is I hope that it was good and it would create a wildfire, kind of like the first X Men did, because I want more westerns to hit you know on big movie season summer kind of right during the spring or fall i want more westerns not necessarily they all have to connect but i need more westerns in my life because they have the directors to do it and the actors apparently are game to play once we see, look at this cast now, and i don't see why they can't do that either because you don't need a big budget this budget only had it was like 60 million which I, that's a lot of money but in today's day and age that's not a lot of money for a movie budget for a big feature film like this. So they're, they're, it has, Westerns have everything going from them moving forward as long as everybody's game to play ball, like you said. Well, absolutely, especially with the budget. You're not going to blow apart a city with a Western. You're just going to shoot a couple people, and most of it's going to be dialogue. Let's be honest. Let's see what Tarantino has done with so-called Westerns. I, I wouldn't really call them you know, the spaghetti Westerns I'm used to, but they're in the Western category. A lot of it's going to be dialogue-driven. Now, going right into the story where we saw it, let's just go off. You know, we're going to go into some spoilers here just to forewarn you. And let's just go right into spoilers. Story and plot. What did you think about the story and plot start to finish as you walked in this thing? I thought it was really good. They did a good job of of getting us invested on on the town itself of, of, hey, why why do these uh, quote-unquote heroes need to come into town and to help these people? Then it was probably a span of, what, 15 minutes? We went from zero of the seven to all seven of them Mm -hmm. and going, oh, shit, these seven are badasses and they're about to work. It was maybe 15 minutes of screen time. That is an impressive feat to get me invested in so many people so quickly and to have all those big-name characters, big personalities working all together. I thought that was great. What about you as far as that, uh, that setup and kind of, getting us invested so quick. I love the plot. I thought it was kind of DC-esque by doing the first Western, by having like 20 fucking people involved in it, not just, you know, one person, the good guy versus the bad guy. There's a lot of people involved in this. The story background had to go really quick. I thought they did a very good job with that. Now, people seeing Westerns, they can kind of see where everyone came from, from their each walk of life. The only thing I kind of had a problem with was really the the bad guy in this i didn't buy him just because at the very end scene when denzel and him kind of had the face off i'm like dude you're fucking done there's no way 
you you can even touch Denzel the way they build up his character at the you know at the end and stuff. Usually, yeah, in what, they didn't make him as they didn't make him as uh, as thuggy, I guess if you would say, or as uh, as imposing as I would have liked. He more I feel like he hid behind his money and his guys a little bit too much. Yeah. And like you said, once it was him and Denzel at the end, there was no doubt in my mind what was going to happen and how it was going to happen. It, it, that, that is one thing that it kind of had going against it. Well, and I kind of grew up on the Clint Westerns more than the uh, John Wayne Westerns, so Hang 'em High is one of my favorite movies. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly probably has the best, you know, mono mono scene ever. And you're probably like, okay, we know Clint's going to win, but how is he going to win because this guy's pretty – fucking badass that was the only thing i think what i was missing from it the story just to kind of go in it we both have seen the original uh magnificent seven it's way different than that so if you think you're just gonna go and it's gonna be piece by piece it's not the townspeople don't turn on them the characters are totally different too you know the chris pratt wasn't in the original one uh the, the only th- one that i think was was the chinese guy that's the, that's the only one but the plot yeah it it went a it went along with everything, and man, I had so much fun at this movie. It was it was a ton of fun, and that was another thing is, is coming from the original and then going to this. Pretty early on, I realized that they're not going to have any similarity, really. And so it was cool just watching a new movie, not comparing it to anything. We do a lot of comparisons to comic books mm-hmm. on this show, and that was one thing that was real nice and fresh is that – Maybe 15 minutes in, I realized, hey, we're not gonna, I'm not going to have to compare this to anything. I'm just going to enjoy a new, cool story. That's why I think the Western genre is definitely something that needs to hit. Now, if I want to see one thing in the summer, I want to see superheroes, I want to see pirates, and I want to see Westerns. That's the three things I want to see going forward. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I just want to see someone on a ship blowing someone else up. And I want to see a Western where two guys in 120 fucking degree heat are somewhere somehow wearing jeans and a bandana and shit, and someone's going to fucking have to go outside the OK Corral. That's what I want to see going forward in my summer. Now, after we talk about the plot, and we don't want to get too spoiler-filled. I, I said we would. We kind of just went over the plot. I really want to talk about the casting and directing of this thing. And that's why I think – well, this is why I think that Westerns are going to go on for a while. Now, you get Fakwa as a director who he brings in Ethan Hawke and Denzel, which, dare I say, that's the first time they've been teamed together since training day, I think. You get Chris Wait, Pratt. Which, if that is true, that's insane. That is insane. Well, Ethan right. Hawke is – I don't know too much other stuff he's been in. I mean, he's been in some stuff, but he hasn't you know, been roaming through Hollywood like he was during the early 90s or late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. It was, it was definitely good to see him, and then uh, Denzel. Obviously, he was he was classic Denzel in this to me, which is, mm-hmm. is really refreshing to see. He was playing that just smooth, cool guy that that we love to see. That he's been in, in kind of the, like you said in that same era, the late late nineties, early two thousands. Well, just to talk on Denzel a while, I know a lot of people were scared of casting him just because of the whole late days where the cowboy was always white and, you know, not to get too political and all that stuff. We just didn't want another Will Smith Wild Wild West. Can I put it that way? Can everyone be, you know, okay if I say that? But Denzel did Denzel. He commanded the screen every time he's in. Of course, he's the biggest badass every time he came in. His first scene when he walked in that bar and whispered in the guy's ear and fucking killed everyone and said, go get the sheriff. And Chris Pratt was over there. Let's go to Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, I'm going to I'm going to say this and I'm not even drunk like we usually are on these things. He is having the biggest movie career from Guardians to Jurassic World to now that Harrison Ford had whenever he had the Star Wars and um, Indiana Jones franchise and kind of go into the fugitive. He is red fucking hot right now and I love everything he's in. When he had that card game going, I had Val Kilmer flashbacks from Tombstone. It was fantastic. It was perfect. Throughout the whole movie, I just – I bought the fact that – you know, in the trailers, that they advertise him as the gambler, and I fucking bought it from the first second we see him at the card game to the, oh, shit's about to hit the fan. I got to get out of here to the, well, I just want my horse. I got to pay this debt all the way up until the fact where he is called upon to be the hero, and then the, the way that he goes out in fucking style, taking yes. that many shots, and then <laughs> – 
basically being dead and going, never mind, here's a fucking piece of dynamite that I lit from my, from my cigar was just, I loved everything about it. And I think that this, I'm going to, I'm going to go bold on you here, Geiger. And we didn't talk about this before. I think he was better in this than he was in Guardians and Jurassic Ooh, World. Wow. Maybe maybe Jurassic World. I don't know. Guardians is one of my closet favorites, and I'm even a Marvel basher, but I love fucking Guardians. He was perfect in this, and this is the reason why. Coming from a family that I was raised by cowboys, this is the only thing I fucking hate that I read on the internet before doing this thing, is everyone said no one had very good initiative going into this. Why would they help this town? And I guess a le- less initiative was Chris Pratt's character. Let me tell you something. If someone... Coming from a family that raised racehorses, if you train a wild fucking animal, a horse, and then someone takes it, you will do anything to get that horse back because you have a connection to that. That was my favorite story going in there when Denzel said, I just bought your horse. Now you got to come fight for me. He's like, I'll do anything to get my fucking horse back. So let's go. Who we got to kill? That was my favorite thing. And then going out like a true cowboy, I'm going to die for... You know, it doesn't really matter what reason, but I'm going to kill the fucking bad guy doing it was so goddamn perfect. The other thing I want to touch on is the love. I want to say one more thing. Okay, go ahead on Pratt. That that line, whenever they're talking about, uh, whenever he goes so far so good, there at the end when he's about to die and he's got like eight bolts in his chest right before he goes for the final heroic scene. Going back, you know, it tied it back to to the story earlier, which we won't get too much in, but when he goes... Denzel asks him, how you doing? And he says, so far, so good. You know he's not doing good, but he played that, I am hurt, I am dying, but this is what I got to do for my... It's not even about the horse anymore at that point. And you, you know that he played that hero role because that's what he was yeah. meant to do. Absolutely. Pratt was perfect in this, and there's even some people on the internet saying he upstaged Denzel, which you could have that conversation, absolutely. Denzel is Denzel, though. So yeah, I'm not it, sure, but it would be a good fight. But I, I still think Denzel would win out just well, because the way he commands the screen every time he's on on it. I'm saying Denzel is Denzel, just like in Training Day. But Ethan Hawke now is Chris Pratt. He plays him perfect. But Ethan Hawke in this movie, I loved a lot too. He was a crazy Cajun by the name of Goodnight Robichaux. He had a Asian dude that had crazy fucking knives coming along with him, and he was just a dude. I, I love their um, dynamic, how he was in the Civil War. Obviously, he was fighting for the South. Denzel definitely wouldn't be fighting for the South. He'd be fighting for the North. But they still have a friendship. And that really, I think, came off on screen. But why the fuck wouldn't it? Because everyone was like, these are the two guys from Training Day with the same directors. This is fucking awesome. It was so yeah. fun to see in theaters. Now, one it thing... Was a oh, blast. Right. It, it was a blast to see him. And, and just his character in general, how he had that kind of that anxiety... And yeah. you know, even as he left the seven that night before, you knew he was going to be back. It was just at what moment was he going to be back? Was he going to come back and kill the bad guy, or was he going to come back for the big fight? Right. And that was, uh, again, it just, they had a lot of depth in all of these characters very quick, which is extremely difficult to do. And, and I think Ethan Hawke pulled that off pretty well. Now, one thing I want to touch on is the love story, or lack thereof, but I love the love story in this. Because the main character, uh, I, I forgot to look up her name. She's not a big actress, but she kills it in this. She kind of looks like a Jennifer Lawrence with freckles. But, That's what I thought, too. Yes. When, I, when it first came on screen, I was like, I didn't know Jennifer Lawrence was in this. Yeah. And then a couple minutes later, I was like, oh, well, that's because she's not. However, her husband gets killed at the very first, and then that brings her to get the Magnificent Seven. Now, I love that she didn't fall in love with anybody else. And if you don't think there's – yes. If you don't think – thank you. If you don't think there's a love story in this, you're completely fucking wrong. There doesn't have to actually be a living person and living person love story. She lost her husband. She got these basically thieves and thugs and everything else – paid them to kill these people who killed her husband to save her town. She didn't fall in love with anybody else. She actually does some shooting at the end, which is fucking awesome. But she I love that guy at the end. Yes, or, she does, bad. yeah. I just but, love that there's no... We, I thought there was a love story when Chris Pratt kind of winked at that chick, and then she just kind of pulled out the window, and he's like, whatever, just drive yeah. away. But the love story in this takes it's place in the first five minutes, then it kind of just goes away, but it, it, it is definitely felt throughout the full movie. Yeah, it's not your traditional love story, which I think is another thing that made this work so well. 
is I, I don't know. It just makes it work that it just makes it work that much better. I don't even have a good answer for it. Reason why? Because it was a feel thing. It was an emotion thing that came off on screen. She had tears in her eyes through ninety percent of the movie yep. as she's talking to these guys. As she's wrangling all these badasses up, and it's all because this one guy capped her husband for standing up for her and the town, which is it, it's, it's just it's just a cool dynamic. Now let's go to stuff because people are probably listening to this and saying this is in the Bro Force Squad pod because they're all agreeing and they're all saying good stuff. So let's talk about stuff we didn't like about this movie. Go ahead. What, what's right. some of the stuff you didn't like? So one of the things that I didn't like was I didn't like the fact that Bung Hunt Lee, which is the Chinese guy, if you couldn't tell by his name. Yep. I didn't like that they like hyped up his knife throwing stuff. At the beginning when we first meet him, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to teach these guys how to use their knives. So he cuts up a bunch of hay bales, and then we literally don't see it anymore. That's about it. He throws a couple of knives, and that's it. And I would have liked to see him really use that skill. We, we see Ethan Hawke's character use his sharp scooting, his long-distance skills. We see Denzel use his you know, shoot-from-the-hip skills a lot. We see the Indian guy use his arrows all the time. And D'Onofrio's character used whatever the fuck D'Onofrio's character was doing at the time. And we didn't get to see him use the knives as much. And that was one thing that I would have liked to see a little bit more of. And then I would have also, we we touched on this a little bit, the bad guy just wasn't menacing enough. He didn't impose his will enough. He didn't match the intensity of the main characters and the heroes uh, as much as I would have liked. And that that was a big thing that kind of... If there was a negative that drew it down, that was one thing that really did it for me. Well, and I apologize for trying to make this quick because we just want you to click on this and see if you want to go to this movie or not. But Mrs. D'Onofrio is the best fucking actor going right now. (laughs) I swear to God, going from Kingpin to Jurassic World to this, and it is a a full fucking circle about characters he has played, and he is fantastic in this. My movie theater— Is there anybody he can't play right now? He was he was a bigger comic relief than Pratt in my movie theater anyway. Well, Everyone was laughing. He was fantastic. His voice going from that squeaky high pitched voice. Yeah, that was hilarious, and the timing of his things were just yes. fantastic. And that's another thing on our last podcast when you said that I said I didn't know D'Onofrio was in that movie, and then when I saw it, I was like, my God, he's fantastic. Now, okay, things I didn't like. I didn't like one thing about this, and. On my dad's side, I'm partial Native American, and I don't feel like any movie besides maybe The Revenant in the history of cinema has ever gotten Native Americans correct. And that includes Dancing with Wolves. Because Dancing with Wolves, Native Americans wouldn't have fucking pot bellies because we're eating you know, veggies and we're hunting shit all fucking day. Native Americans should be in shape. They should have long hair unless – I know this took place in California, so maybe not – and this Native American who apparently got kind of kicked out of his tribe or his tribe said, hey, you need to go find your separate way. Did another person get kicked out of his tribe who was his makeup artist? Because the war paint was perfectly done. He was like Finn Balor from WWE. It made no sense to me. I would like to see a movie where, oh, man, we need a Native American in here because that will give a dynamic. They need to do it a lot better. They need to give them a little, little more layers, and I know there's seven of them. I kind of like how he had the deer and he ate the heart and stuff, and he you know, spoke his tribe's language and also spoke English. That's the only thing I really didn't like, and just coming from a partial Native American, can we please have a Cowboys and Indians movie where Jason Momoa is like the fucking Indian chief and we have a – I don't care. Get Christian Bale as the cowboy and have him go head-to-head. That's what I fucking want, a Native American who's big – badass, meaty, and can kick some fucking ass, and his war paint's not perfectly drawn on. That's what we fucking need. Now, going into what I liked about this movie, I want to say one thing that I really fucking liked about this movie. Then you can say one thing that you really liked about it. Best scene I ever saw in this and is well-directed is when they were sleeping in the desert. We don't get enough of those Western scenes anymore. That's the one thing I remember in my... My grandpa's gone to another life now, and I remember watching that with him when he was babysitting me, and I was like five years old. And it's a bunch of cowboys sleeping in the desert, talking about shit, drinking whiskey, over a campfire, hoping that they don't get shot by a bunch of Indians because they're not on their land anymore. And Chris Pratt delivered on that 
fucking scene so goddamn well when he took the whiskey. That was my favorite scene through this movie, and it was very well directed. Now, what was the one thing that you took away from this movie? Maybe a scene, the best thing that you liked. I'd love to have your opinion on it. Act two. When they first get to the town, and they run the, the, um, the guys out of town, and they shoot them all except for the one guy or the two guys that get away, when they walk into the town and take the town, I thought that that fight scene and that shoot 'em up scene was probably better than the final shoot 'em up scene. Mm-hmm. That one was fantastic. You got to see all of them do their things. The Chinese guy used his knives, which yes. was perfect. And that fight scene was probably one of the best choreographed fight scenes and and, and uh, shoot 'em up scenes that I have seen in a long fucking time. And again. They didn't have to use machine guns, and there wasn't blood spilling everywhere and blowing people's heads off. They were just good old six shooters shooting each other. Now that scene and the scene I spoke about, also a scene I like to throw in there because I haven't seen this in a while, and I fucking love it. The old cowboy walking into the saloon, takes a shot of whiskey, shoots the fucking bartender, shoots about eight other guys, then walks out. That was the perfect scene, and if you think that's overplayed – then you're probably not listening to our podcast because you're a really old guy because, God, I fucking miss that Western so much. Yeah. Now. what? So, Guy, I got a question for you. Go ahead. What's something that you would change about this? I was, I'm glad you asked because I was just about to get into that because on the Bro Force Squad, we don't just talk shit. We will talk about if we're behind the lens, what we will actually change. What I would change about this movie, first off, I'd get a different villain, one that I liked how he played it. That, but he was more businessy to me and not as much, dude, if Denzel and him have a showdown, I know Denzel will probably win. Maybe not, though, because they killed off a lot of main characters. I just didn't believe that he's a guy – I mean I would feel comfortable going head-to-head with him. He wasn't a guy that fucking scared me. He didn't bring out – like he wasn't a Mickey Rourke from Iron Man 2. that was just like, God, this guy could maybe kick Iron Man's fucking ass if we like, get him mono a mono. That's yeah, he kind of he hid behind his guys a lot. Yes. And his money. Yeah. And and he wasn't on the front lines as much as as I think that somebody in that position probably should have been. And, and another thing or I even in a western would have been. Yes. And the other thing I would change talking about hiding behind his guys, I changed the Gatling gun, man. I had to look this up a lot. I don't know if that's historically accurate. Now talking about historically accurate is going way in deep because we have kind of ethnic ties in this movie that's probably not historically accurate but going to the gatlin gun is probably post-civil war well we know it's post-civil war era talking about ethan hawk's character but i don't think if they did have a gatlin gun it wasn't that advanced let's just say yeah, that i think i i'll argue that they probably did have gatlin guns but there's no way it was that powerful that it would work that well and that it couldn't be movie. four football fields away and destroy a town okay. yeah yeah, exactly. That's the only um, part I didn't like. That got wild, wild west to me, and I was like, when's the fucking tarantula coming in and destroying the town? That's the only part I would have changed. Both of those. Take those out. Okay. They're, they're leaving the tarantula for the sequel. <laughs> yeah, probably. Go ahead. One thing that uh, – actually, there's two two things that I would change. Um, they're both kind of with the final scenes – or with the final, final scene there. First, the Chinese guy asked Ethan Hawke's character – or says, I knew you'd come back. Ethan Hawke says, why? He says, because you left your flask. Yep. To me, I thought the flask is very symbolic of Ethan Hawke and the Chinese guy's relationship. I would have liked to see the Chinese guy actually survive, maybe taking a bullet to the chest where the flask where was, the, yeah. and that flask saves his life. Yeah. And then he rides off into the sunset at the end. And then again, they killed off a lot of guys. We have to replace that death somewhere. I would have replaced uh, that death with the Indian guy. Because I think if you had him going after and possibly trying to save D'Onofrio's character, because D'Onofrio hunted Indians for so long, that would have been extremely symbolic. But then they both die at the end. Yeah. Um, I think that would have been a good a good change. And then the only other thing I would have changed is at the end, they make it seem like the surviving of the seven are now this group, kind of this, this ensemble of, of uh, vigilantes that are going to ride into all these other towns and save people. And... That was, wasn't exactly the message that I was getting the entire movie. I thought they were going in there, they're going to save this one town, and that was it. I would have liked to see all of them ride off into the sunset mm-hmm. in their separate ways and, and continue on their lives like this never happened. That's another thing. Well, I'm getting nitpicky here, but D'Onofrio talking about how he skinned Indians, and then he joins the Seven, and he's like, 
oh, hey, you speak English? Like, he didn't have a problem with the Indian at all, and the Indian didn't have a problem with him. That's, that's something that, to the story, didn't make much sense. Now, before we get to our overall review, do you think they're actually going to make a sequel to this? Because there are three surviving people. Do you want do you want uh, my honest opinion, or do you want what I hope happens? Let's do both. I don't care. I hope they don't. This movie yeah. is perfect how it is, and I think that if they attempt to make a sequel, it's just going to taint this one. But Hollywood is sequel happy. This this made them money. They're going to try and make more money with the second one. The only thing they have going against them is arguably two of the top three characters died in D'Onofrio and yep. Chris Pratt. So who are they going to – what's the star power they're going to get to replace that? And I don't know that they can. I think they'll do a sequel because Hollywood's stupid, and you could have Brad Pitt in another town that's a better gunfighter yeah, or something. You just have him join it. Now, I want to see a sequel, but not to this. I just want to see more westerns, and I think they missed a huge chance with Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, what's number six is coming out next summer? I don't really care. I just want to see more pirate movies, not necessarily have those go along. Westerns? Revamp them, please. They're so fucking fun to watch. This directing, the old western town where it's like you got a saloon, you got a fucking bank, you got a jail, and you get a place where you get new boots. And that's fucking it. And a hotel full of whores. That's in a town. That's a nice you town. A pl- you got a place to reshoe your horses. Yes. That is Other fucking that, fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. I love the directing. I love the going to the saloon. If you got a problem, go outside. One guy comes in and takes a shot. The other guy gets fucking carried out somewhere in the river, and the sheriff comes in and asks questions. I hope they do more westerns. Not necessarily. They, they can't do a sequel to this. It was really good. Just don't fucking taint it, even though Denzel survived. Now, overall review going into the movie. Go ahead, man. Do a 9 out of 10, 1 out of 5. We kind of go all over the fucking place. But should yeah. people see this movie? Uh, I think people should see this. It was a fantastic movie. Um, it was a lot of fun from start to beginning. I never once felt like there, – there wasn't a single moment where I was like, all right, like are we almost done? Or like when's the next exciting thing going to happen? I was – I'm not going to sit on the edge of my seat the whole time, but I was thoroughly entertained from beginning to end. And at the end, I wasn't – Wishing there was more, or, or I didn't have any questions. It was, okay, that's what it is, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to give it a letter grade today. We're going with a letter grade, and I'm going to yes. give it a solid B. B, nice. Yeah, yep. not quite a B. If there was something between a B and a B plus, that's what it would get. But uh, we don't have that luxury, so we're, we're going to go with a B. Should you see this movie, and the question is, who are you? So I'm going to go down it. If you are a person... That your wife or girlfriend says, we haven't had a date night for a while, you should go fucking see this movie. Because there's something for everyone. Women dig it because the woman kind of is the main character and she's the antagonist through this whole movie, getting the seven together. And she's the one that's trying to avenge her husband. Men dig it because, well, what do you want, man? You want comedy? We got Chris Pratt and D'Onofrio who are fucking hilarious through this whole movie. Do you want some testosterone shit? Pratt will give you that. And Denzel will give you that in spades. He'll whisper in someone's ear, shoot the fucking bartender. The action scenes in this, for a Western, there's a lot of them. The first yeah. scene is an action scene. The middle scene where they take over the town is the action scene. And the last scene is fucking fantastically done. Giving a letter grade to this. And if you're a kid, you should see it. It's PG-13. Why not? Take off the reins, Mom. Letter grade to this. I give it an A-, minus, man. It's so goddamn fun. You know, for us, being total comic book nerds, I go into these movies sometimes and be like, just please don't fuck up. This movie, I just went in. Slap my knee and be like, this is so much goddamn fun. Give me another one. Give me another Western. Give me a Western with fucking Channing Tatum and Chris Pine. Fucking love it. Both sh- sharpshooters. Let's let's do that shit next summer. Why not? More Westerns, please. A- minus from a B, but you, you all go see it. Popcorn. Definitely get a beer for it. Watch them shoot them up shit. So that's all we got. That was our quick lift. We are Bro Force Squad. Please subscribe to us to iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Bro Force Squad. Like us on Facebook and check out our website. That is it for and us. We're on YouTube as well, guys. We are uh, on all YouTube. Commentaries yeah. Commentaries are up there. So uh, if you need to, you know, you don't necessarily want to watch a movie, but you're ready to listen to some people talk about it. We've got hours and hours of us doing uh, some some good movies and some just fucking ridiculous movies. It's a lot of fun. You guys should come check us out. 
We are like the fat, drunk chick at the bar with the short skirt. There is no way you can miss us. We're on YouTube. We're on iTunes. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We have our own website. So check us out any way you can. So I'm Matt Geiger. He is Brian Banner. Till next time, thank you and good night.